Hi everybody, it's Mark J. Parker. Thank you for checking out Release Date Rewind. This is a special episode of the podcast. Normally, we celebrate movie anniversaries, but this episode is all about a TV show celebrating a milestone anniversary, and I hope you enjoy it. Procter & Gamble Productions joined the show early on as an original co-producer of the series. And this is one of those rare, really rare series where they shot all 13 episodes before they even started airing. I don't wow. know why. I guess the WB was just like, just go. Because normally you shoot a few and then you see how they go so that you yeah. know if you can cancel it and like, you know, save some money. But they shot all 13. Um, and so Procter & Gamble was on board, but and, and they apparently had no creative control. They were strictly financed and I guess... They just wanted to put their name on it. But then once, a couple months before the premiere, once clips were going out and storylines were going out to press about like, oh yeah, there's like a racy teacher storyline. Procter & Gamble said, see ya. And they just pulled, and apparently they sold their interest in the show to other companies and like, we want nothing to do with this. Wow. So is it is interesting because we were so young. We didn't really hear the buzz before, before it premiered. I mean, I don't remember ever hearing like any like, oh, this is the show about the teacher, you know? Which must be why my mom was just like, mm. absolutely not. But I wonder, did you, in the, I think it's the pilot, there's like, a scene where chapstick is like heavily featured oh. like the mom is like holds up the chapstick and it's like what do you mean like i have chapped lips and some oh, shit like that and then they like share the chapstick kiss. yeah 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 oh. It's wow, I missed that. Okay, Chapstick product placement. Yeah. Chapstick swooped in and was like, we'll save the show. Yeah, we've got it. Here's our money. <laughs> they might be Procter & Gamble. It might be like a holdover. Oh, you maybe. know, maybe. Yeah, because it's like the first episode. There was so a lot were... of Revlon placement too. I'm wondering. Mm. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Katie Holmes was at the time like in some Revlon ads, you know, at least by season Revlon two, girl. I feel like. Because she was definitely the leader of the girls, you know, even though we know Michelle Williams is such a star and such a great actress, she didn't seem to really get as much like spotlight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you guys agree? Yeah. yeah. She was I a little bit Dawson more. I think Dawson and Joey were written to be the leads. And yeah. Pacey and Jen were written to be the supporting, but they're all important. But then also, yeah, right. like some Which of is, them stand out. I'm glad you bring group. that up because let's talk about the theme song, of course, one of the most iconic theme songs <laughs> in the history of TV, but also the just the shots, the opening credits that the it's interesting because we start with James Vanderbeek, but then it's not Katie Holmes. It goes James, Michelle, Joshua, Katie. So I always thought that was interesting. And I don't know if maybe in years that went on that maybe Katie then it moved to number it. two because yes I agree Kit I feel like from the get-go it's always like Dawson and Joey are our leads yeah and if anything Michelle is sort of number four in my mind because she but, comes in yeah, <laughs> it's always how girl. I thought it's like the yep. three best friends and then this new girl yeah. Yeah. yeah but so they were billed a little differently um but so now I'm going to throw it over to you guys so we know that you guys weren't able to watch it live when it was really airing but do you guys have any memories of watching the show for the first time? Like what drew you in? Did you love everything about it? Did you hate some about it, something about it? Sarah, I'll start with you first. What do you remember sure. of those early like viewing memories? So I was not allowed to watch, however, comma, my brother was, oh. my older brother. And he would watch on my parents' TV in their bedroom. Oh. And so every, Tuesday night, I would find myself down the hall in my room with the door open, desperately oh. trying to listen and figure out what this show was about. I also did get caught sneaking and watching it. But I think, I think actually my mom wound up loosening up a bit in that I, I, I think, first of all, you know, you're, she's exhausted. So how many bad, like, you know, which right. hill do you die on? Yeah. Not it's going to be eat your vegetables. It's not this. <laughs> yeah. I do think also it just um, kind of became clear. Like she watched, I think the first couple with my brother. And I think she just realized like, oh, this is going to be so over her head. Mm. You know, like she, like there, it's not actually a risk to let my kid consume this because she doesn't know what half of these jokes are or, you know, the, the double entendres and all that. No like, one says walking the dog. No oh, one says that. That's um, the thing that humans say. I know. Yeah, no, never heard of that. So <laughs> I think 
she just also became way more secure that I was too young to piece a lot of it together. Yep. Um, but I think when I really started being able to watch it in the open mm. was season two. Okay. Um, so, you know, a year older. And again, I think my mom just loosened the reins a little bit about my TV consumption. Yep. Um, and I remember I had a Joshua Jackson poster from my Teen People magazine. I was all PC, all day, wow. all the way. You knew him. You just Correct. knew. Like, he was your guy from the... Now, now, Sarah, you had seen the Mighty Ducks movies. I know you love them. You probably had already seen them. You already kind of recognized yeah. him, I'm sure. Okay. Yes. Yep. yes, 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 yes. And I also felt a true, like, oh, I, if only I could look like Katie Holmes. Like, I, you know, to me, she was it girl. Yeah. I wanted to wear a loose plaid shirt with a tummy top and you know, cargo khaki shorts. And like, that was, oh, she was just everything. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think, really the way I consumed it. I don't even know if like plot meant that much to me again, because I was nine or 10 when it came out. So I would be like 11 for season two. Yeah. I don't know that I was like, so invested in that first watch around like, who's, you know, who's going to kiss who or whatever. It was more just like consuming these people that I just wanted to look like and have mm. in my life. And like, you know, like, Oh, I want, I want a boy who wants me the way Pacey wants Joey. And like, yeah, it was, I, I had, I think I had no idea actually how filthy this show was. Right. Oh, totally. I, but, I'm sure half of it went over our heads and yeah, you can only just pick up the certain things, but you're right. Like yeah. they, they definitely were, not like idols, but it was just like, oh, I can't wait to be a little older, just a few years older yeah. and like say these things to each other. I feel like I said to someone in school, like, I don't want to lose you. And like, yeah, I forget who it was, but then they told their mom that. And then their mom <laughs> told my mom. And then She's like, what mom, are you, suicidal? My mom was like, about? yeah, my mom was just like, wait, why are you telling someone you don't want to lose them? What do you mean by that? I'm like, just they said it on better. Dawson's Creek. I don't know. Yeah. I tried it. Yeah. You know? I think you say that to people you like, like your friends. Yeah, but like, it was just so out of the to blue. Paris. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you telling Allison not to go to Paris? Right. Like, huh? So weird. Um, now, Kit, tell me, what are your <laughs> earliest memories of watching the show? I know you, now, did you, yes. did you kind of just jump in to like season three or were you able I to kind of, oh, okay, you jumped in. I jumped in. in okay. But I also, upon realizing that I had agreed to do this show. I was like, oh my God, that's right. And now this is going to be a really embarrassing story that I'm going to have to tell. Yes, you will. I will. So, okay. The non-embarrassing part is that I really wanted to see the show. Probably Elburn's heard something about like the teacher or something because she was just like unequivocally, no, like Buffy's fine, but this one's about sex. So no, you can't like vampires are fine. Um, but <laughs> sex is real and it's scary. Um, but so I was like, okay, so then I had kind of hemmed and hawed and then it was seventh grade, I think when, um, our, the second season, right. Would have been se our seventh uh, grade. I think it was sixth grade for us. It was Yeah. The sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Okay. For us, fifth for Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Then this must've been like third season that, yeah. cause I think it was seventh grade pre-algebra right before I moved. And, <laughs> and, and I finally like got Elburns to let me watch it. And she was like, fine, fine, fine. We'll turn during a commercial. And so she turned over to it and Joey Potter is taking off her shirt, wearing a black bra. And now I know from having seen this episode later that like, she's kind of trying to prove that she could be sexy and that she decides that she like, doesn't want all that nonsense and like puts her shirt back on quickly. But my mom was like, Oh, okay. See, now it's the black <laughs> bra show. I see it's Victoria's secret tonight on a Wednesday. <laughs> She's like, you are not watching this. You are not. But then we moved and I was pissed <laughs> because oh. teenage, I mean, I ended up being one of the best. You were the Jen Lindley. You were the, the you were the Jen. Yeah. All bets are off. I'm basically allowed to watch whatever, not whatever I want, but I'm allowed to watch all the WB shows that summer because you took me away from my friends and I get to watch all my dubs. So it was the summer of young Americans. Which with I'm Kate so glad Bosworth. you brought that up. No. Yeah, with Kate Bosworth. Yeah, Bosworth. And I had no idea, Kate, because I have such a distinct memory of like, I think we were sitting in Friendlies talking about Young Americans. Very young short lived show. Was sponsored by Friendlies. The girl oh. from the wrong side of the tracks worked at Friendlies. Yes. Oh my God. So <laughs> of course we were there. But I had no idea. And I, I'm, I hate to interrupt you. I'm just going to quickly say, no, speaking of yeah. Young Americans, apparently 
apparently that is technically a Dawson's Creek spinoff because there's a character in that I forget I had somewhere in my notes some guy really? no no but some guy was in three episodes in season three of Dawson's Creek okay. and apparently they only wrote him into Dawson's Creek so that viewers from Dawson's Creek would be interested in oh that super side character who just has a three episode arc now is leading young Americans with Kate Bosworth so it sort of seemed was like it Ian, yeah. so Ian Summerholder no it wasn't even Ian it was someone was else who I didn't like recognize the lead yeah guy. It, was, it was some blonde guy who I guess plays someone's friend in season three of Dawson's for a few episodes oh and then God. and then it's Young Americans which that didn't last long I think it was really just a summer show for it was a like a weeks. summer show it was like yeah. a mini series like an event so I watched the shit out of that which was exactly what you were saying Sarah it was, it was the vibe I was just consuming mm. so then eighth grade rolls around and it's like fall and I come home and I was like I really wish that I could see like what happened in the first season of Dawson's Creek. So I looked it up and I am almost positive it was Drew's scriptorama mm -hmm. that had all the transcripts. And I was like, well, <clears throat> let me get my acting voice on. And I acted out alone in my home. Oh, I, I love was Joey so Potter, obviously. I, I remember the walk the dog line. I was like, walk the dog? What? Oh, they're talking about that. Wow. <laughs> I love that. that you so you so you found these transcripts online yeah. and you were just acting that were you saying lines out loud just to yeah, yourself? Yeah, but under under my breath out loud, like the yeah. way that I to this day will do a first read on a script yeah. is what I was doing with all of these things, like under your breath, like little you know what you know what, dad? But I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> I probably had a lot of her fucking mannerisms too, because I was a little insecure for Nat. So it's like, mm. Dad, you were never there. Like, I just, I go around and nobody loves me. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. I love that. Oh my God, I love that so much. What is your problem? The problem is that from the moment Little Miss Highlight showed up, you haven't said one word to me. Crap, that is pure crap. Really, I think that this switch probably happens in like end of season two, early season three. But Joey really does become the main character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is her show. Who says it? I wrote it down in my notes, but I feel like it was e it was actually Pacey later on in season one where he's kind of getting annoyed because he's starting to kind of like Joey. And mm -hmm. he even says to Dawson, who's it going to be, Dawson? Is it Jen or Joey? Do you like the blonde or the brunette? As if yes. it's the only option. Sorry, redheads. Sorry, people of color. It's just, it's just these gonna two. I was going to say, they're all so different. Like we were saying earlier that they're so different from each other. I'm like, yeah, for white people. <laughs> like they're all so different for a bunch yeah, of white kids. That's true. That, oh, yeah. This is like the whitest of white, this show. I know. Oof. They should have um, left it North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's just funny how season one is all about the love triangle with Dawson in the center. But yeah, as the years go on, Joey's in the center of that love triangle for sure. Yeah. 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 And she was in the center of the poster. I remember, I, do you guys remember, and sorry to cut you off, Sarah, but real quick, there was that like carnival or something, not a carnival, but there was like an event that would happen at the middle school every May where like yes. there were sand, sand art. And there were like, oh, yes. there was always a yes. W, a local like Philly WB table and they had posters. Does this ring a bell at yeah. all for you? guys yeah i yes. remember every year like being like i need to get my though. yeah i don't i don't know what it was it but was some i remember Saturday walking event. to melissa's house in laurel creek oh, okay right yep. from you there missed. with katie oh no but it was uh, they had just moved to laurel creek you walked uh, to laurel creek from, from school? school it's where okay you'd have to go like down swedes run like swedes yeah. mill uh -huh. road that's yeah. okay yeah that's a that's, that's a, a good walk. That's a walk. I think that's where no we went. sidewalks. <laughs> yeah, we went down. That was like part of it. I do remember us going down. Yeah, if Melissa were only here. I know. Uh, but I also could have no, it would have had to have been. Unless it was Katie and Lauren and we were going to Melissa's. We were like, no, we can do it. But huh. it was definitely like we had to walk behind the guardrail at a certain point. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I just remember yeah. one year <laughs> <where> we <went. laughs> uh, while you were walking, I was getting my posters and <laughs> so and putting them up because my wall yes. was just like Dawson's and I had yes. all these posters. But yeah. I loved those free WB posters. And I remember, Sarah, going back to your thought of by a certain season, it was it might be called Dawson's Creek, but it is Joey's show. Joey is the lead. And I remember it was maybe season three or four where they were at the height of the love triangle and she's in the center looking in the camera and you have Dawson over here and Pacey over there. And I was like, OK, this show is switching. All right. And it was exciting. You know, it, yeah. was, it was it was a little weird just because Dawson was kind of always 
really the four of them, but I remember Jen wasn't even on the poster. It was only about the love triangle. So yeah. Cause yeah. she went off and started doing more film work. Mm -hmm. Like I know it was like 10 years after, but like 10 years after this is dark night. And, yeah. and so less than 10 years after the premiere of Dawson's Creek is Brokeback Mountain. And yep. she's nominated for an Academy Award and yeah. like then meets her Academy Award nominated husband and then they mm -hmm. have a kid and I like know, continue right? to do this yeah. like, awesome work. It is so interesting to me that no one of the core group left the show. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like these days it would maybe be less, it, it wouldn't be surprising to me if like, especially oh, totally. your, their career outside the shows really started to take off. And yeah. Like, yep. Those core four, they stuck it out. It, they really it, it, did. It surprising. And I don't know if this was just a rumor, because I remember even like talking about this, like probably with you guys, like in high school or whatever. But I had, a, I feel like I had always heard, or maybe I made it up, that like Michelle Williams did not like being on the show, and that's I why I they like kind of they like killed her in the last episode. She died, and it was kind of like, well, you finally died. But like, I. But then I'm all I know is. There. Now, in all interviews, she even said, like, she thinks nothing but great things about Dawson's Creek. She loved doing it. She actually said, which I thought was pretty cute, that every film she does or every big thing now, she constantly is remembering of Daw remembering Dawson's Creek because it was just, even though she had done other things before then, this was, like, obviously her first massive role where, like, she was working hard every day. So I don't know why I definitely remember telling friends, like, yeah, she doesn't want to be on the show. Yeah. I, I, I could not find any evidence <laughs> nowadays so i think i was perpetuating a rumor and i'm sorry michelle williams well and she and busy phillips are like best friends yeah so. isn't that that's such a oh, funny like that. pairing from this show right yeah were they ever in any episodes together <laughs> yeah 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 i mean Although i guess they would have to mm -hmm. i guess their characters didn't interact a ton because mm -hmm. in yeah. college years jen is really off with jack doing yeah. their mm. thing and joey and what was Busy. Busy's character? Um, Audrey. Audrey are yeah. their own thing, but they're besties in real life and besties like, so at every cool. award show, right? Front yeah. row. Yeah. Busy's always her date to award shows. Aww. I should go. But um I'm just gonna pretend we kissed, okay? Let's talk about the first episode. We gotta talk about the pilot. Yes. I think it's a great pilot. It sets the scene. Jen Lindley comes to town. We hear that funny song, Hey, Pretty Girl, yeah. as she's walking in slow motion from the cab. Um, I'm like, you really took a cab from New York? And everyone says, like, oh, on a good day, you can get here from New York in four hours. I'm like, hmm, okay. I don't know if you, maybe she took a cab, from the, cab. from the train station or something, right? You it's a train station nearby. So that's the big thing. <laughs> Jen Lindley comes to town um, right as they are entering their sophomore year in high school, right? Yeah. They're 15-ish. And Joey, all of a sudden, we start the episode where Joey's like, we really can't like watch movies and sleep over anymore, Dawson. Like, we're different now. We're changing. And that's when she gets to, you know, masturbating and all this stuff. Yeah. That, like, we can't talk about this. And Dawson is still very innocent. What are you talking about? So Joey, like Sarah said, like, Joey is definitely the horniest, the most uh, like forward thinking, like, hey, I'm a woman now. Like, we can't do this. Meanwhile, Dawson's like, what movie are we going to watch next? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of their world. But I thought you could just be my emotional support girlfriend. And then I, I could just like hook up with the blonde one when she I shows know. up. Oh my God. Dawson that has part. so much to <laughs> yep. learn. Exactly. That part. He's got so much to learn in this season. I know. Um, but we, we see that Dawson and Pacey have such a fun job working the video store together. And that's where Tamara, Ms. Jacobs, another slow motion entrance. We had Jen, now Tamara's entering, yes. and Pacey is smitten uh, right off the bat. She's an older woman. We don't really know how old. I guess she's supposed to be, what, like 30? Even though she kind of talks says older. 40. Oh, 40? Okay. Yeah, he, said, yeah, he wow. said 40 when he like yelled at her right before she kissed him. When he like oh, yes. her into kissing him. Yep, you're <laughs> so true. right. You're yeah. you're an insecure you're insecure about yeah, pushing insecure forty about and I'm the best sex you'll never even have. No, admit it. You yeah. know you're a knockout. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so I'm she comes in never and and we learn yeah. that she's his teacher, you but are he's a fifteen year old virgin. I know. <laughs> no, no, I, you are like, not. Can you imagine a fifteen year old saying that to you? I would be like, 
I'm going to call the police on myself. Like, <laughs> I would laugh. Yeah, I would, I'd be like, I'd be what like, have like, you been oh, watching? Oh, no, no. <laughs> but she falls for it, right? Hey, is this kid bothering you? Who's this guy? What are some of your favorite sad. moments, any favorite lines or like any storylines that has st started in the first episode? Anything that really called out to you in this rewatch? I'll start with I'll start with Kit. My number one, I even write down same hashtag Wharf Life vibes as I know what you did last summer. <laughs> wait, what? Hashtag what? Wharf Life. It's oh, oh Wharf Life. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? Okay, that yes. That hashtag totally. that we made go viral. Yes, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know what I, you the, did last summer, obviously. That's also why I like love the North Carolina of it all. Because, yeah, it's as if like the, the characters of I Know What You Did Last Summer are just just on that street and then we have these characters right yeah, yeah. very like they've worthy. all got slickers they've all yes. got and there's and i know what you did last summer poster fucking I everywhere know. everywhere he, like showing the movie and i'm like <laughs> yes. you gotta... i know i love when they're watching it in the scare episode and it's also kind of meta because sam michelle geller's on the same network so that was a fun little nod i yeah. also love in the pilot when dawson's like bullying the teacher into letting him join the class and he's the, his teacher he's like oh it's He's just like, you know what this is? And he's like, psycho, Alfred Hitchcock. Like, and I'm like, and the teacher's like, I'm sorry. In 1998, you know the name of a classic movie that right. came out 30 years ago? The bar is on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, this poor teacher. I know. So, my God, kid. Okay, yeah. <laughs> You're in. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I just love that that teacher has, and I know what you did last poster, last summer poster so, in class. I'm like, I don't know if the film teacher would have that, but okay, cool. Has it earned the gravitas at that point? Like it's right. been a couple months. Yeah. It had a good box office run. <laughs> I know. So funny. How about you, Sarah? Any like funny moments that um, really stuck out to you? I mean, my notes, first of all, I truly an unhinged episode of television. <laughs> I, I loved it, but it was like... <laughs> Uh, the whiplash that I was getting, jumping between characters and scenes, it was wild. I think the things that stood out to me, so I love how, I, I love the the way that they're trying to really show that Jen is a New Yorker. And she's like, ugh, I don't wake up before noon. I need coffee. I, I quit coffee. smoking. I quit smoking. And like, and I'm 15. <laughs> I'm 15. <laughs> Not all of these things can be true. Uh -huh. um, I've had 12 kids. It's like, no, yeah. bitch, no. Meanwhile, she does not at all feel like a New Yorker to me. She is so, yeah. she, if anything, I think Joey is more of the New Yorker. Yes. And Jen is the local, soft, you know, yes. motherly. Flower, you know, she's got, right. She's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. Super soft. Yes. Um, the other big notes I have are Dawson, so confident. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh my she god. Really wins <laughs> this world with just extreme. He is confidence. wealthy. And he is white. He mm -hmm. is straight. He is cis. Yes, he all is this place. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is his creek. It is <laughs> his creek. creek. That is not just a creek. nickname, bitches. The like, landowner. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and but I think the the thing that made me write that down was his conversation with the teacher where it was like I would never speak to an adult this way. Right. Even right now. And I am an adult. I don't think I would speak to an adult like this. Like just fully like asserting and like they, yeah. the confidence is uh -huh. wild. And then yeah. on the flip side, the misery of Joey is also wild to me. <laughs> that is the most miserable person I've ever seen. She is scowling. On. Oh my I God. Know, it's Best she scowl like... of 1998. Oh, oh my God. God. She yeah. is in it she is going oh, through she really is. it oh, my dad's dad's to pray over her because <laughs> she is in dire straits yes. yes and just the sight of this blonde girl coming out of this cab oh my god i i feel like she'd have Palpable. a knife behind her back just ready to you know yeah. Yeah. Oh, cause she says some dig about like does she make a like a boner joke or something as Jen like approaches the three of them? Yeah, I feel like she I did. I can't remember what it was, but it it was. And then when Wild. she asked Jen, when she's like, "Are you a size queen, Jen?" I was like, "The fuck is a size queen?" Wild. I know because I'm an adult, 
But like, are you kidding me? I consider myself to be a horny 15 year old. And I still, I did not know that that it certain wouldn't, it would not dance trippingly off the tongue. Right. Like who says that? Size queen. Yeah. I love my favorite moments from now. this episode are. <laughs> <I have> no <laughs> comment. <laughs> I... <laughs> you did not say that at 15. We no, I'm sure I did not. I'm sure I did. <laughs> it's until 25. Sure. A solid decade after for us to bandy that shit about. Definitely. But no, my favorite moments from this episode, speaking of Size Queen, I love the whole movie theater sequence. I love it. I love the hand holding yes. with Jen already. Does It's going back to That's his confidence. A, it's the do you Do you want to ease into it? Like, you just met her yesterday and you're already like trying to like hold her hand and Joey's yes. watching that. Oh, she's got her eyes on those hands. And then immediately goes into the size queen thing, pissing Dawson off. I also love how elsewhere in the theater, and I love how they're going to see Waiting for Guffman. Yes. <laughs> really interesting choice. I love that. I love it. I love that the theater is packed. Good. But yes. elsewhere, a couple rows forward, we have Miss Jacobs on a date-ish. And she's with, yeah. I think, the film class teacher, right? Is he? Is she, or she, Benji. I, I, I noticed yeah, his Benji. name was I Benji. I think she's with him. Oh, I forget. No. But we learn later that they're close friends and that he's gay. Right. Which which is fun. Oh. And Pacey's shocked. Mr. Gold's gay. I think he I think that's his last name. But yeah, so she's there with Benji, I think. Unless it's just a different guy. And Pacey's really like laying it on thick. Talk about confidence. Pacey yeah. did not I mean, the boys have so much to learn. It's really funny. This show, Kevin Williamson is basically saying, Yeah, girls, you are way smarter than the boys. You pick yeah. up everything and the boys are so dumb, right? <laughs> yeah. Because then he gets punched and the popcorn goes right. flying and that whole sequence yeah. I love. I love that they're making like a Creature from the Black Lagoon ripoff movie because yeah. we they made movies so that were ripoffs nuts. of things. I mean, it's crazy how like, yeah, I don't think this show influenced me wanting to make like short films with you guys, but it is eerie how similar... You know, I mean, we never made a cool decapitated head for for Joey. I mean, that would have been cool if I made that for you guys. That's but... what Ash was like. What budget do these kids have? <laughs> like and then he also said, because Ash was not allowed to see it either when we were growing up. Oh, really? No. I had my he parents were like, again, Christian. go for he was it. Raised born again, like he was oh. allowed to celebrate Halloween when oh he was growing God. up. Well, yeah, there's also a weird. There's a little sound. Yeah, are you hearing that? that? Yeah, I don't. I, it's not a big deal at all. But I hear it every once in a while. I don't hear it now. I don't hear it now either. Why don't you keep talking, Kit? Just Sarah's say... vibrating. Me... Oh, okay, me... if I can just keep talking and we'll see if it comes in from me. Yeah, because so, it seems for I was sort of catching it. It seems to happen when you're talking sometimes, I was worried, but yeah. maybe not. But it's it's but so maybe minor. It's Sarah, I'm moving around <laughs> while doing it. Um, oh, the God. sound the sound that you hear is Maya yeah. snoring. I... Oh my God. I'm like, I'm like, oh kid, I think it happens God. when you're talking. Something's wrong with you. No, that's so funny. Oh, I Maya's love it. Maya's trying to drown me out. She's like, uh-huh. Yeah, thank Maya's you. like, get to it. The WB Television Network presents a landmark drama introducing four new stars, a series destined to be one of the most talked about television events of the new year. That's in your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy life. Dawson's Creek. Coming Tuesdays this January to the WB. One person I forgot to mention on the creatives, did you notice And in the end credits of every episode, creative consultant Mike White of the White Lotus and many other things, Mike White was on the team. And no, I, had, I had no idea. He wrote two of my favorite episodes of all of Dawson's Creek, Detention and oh. The Scare. Oh my That's God. Mike White. Yeah, and wow. he co-wrote the finale, uh, Decisions, the last episode of season one. Wow. So, yeah, Mike White was a creative consultant for season one and then supervising producer for season two. And he didn't really, like, have a lot under his belt by that time in his career. So th that was pretty cool. Wow. Then he moved on to other shows. But, yeah, the famous Mike White of The White Lotus got his TV writing start on Dawson's Creek. Isn't that amazing? Ugh, I love so that. Bad. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.